Hi, I'm Paul Battaglia. Welcome to Chapter 4, Integration. You know, this is a very exciting chapter for us because it gives us the opportunity as teachers to show our students a lot of things here and a lot of connections. For instance, how do we continue to use limits as a foundation of calculus? How do we tie in what we learned with differentiation to this new concept called integration? So we'll start the chapter in section 4.1 with just some basic rules of integration. It's a great opportunity to start off with a little activity I called KWL. So what we'll do is we'll have students take a piece of paper, divide it into three columns. And in the first column, we'll just have the initial K, letter K up there. And we ask students, what do you already know? Just list as many things as you already know about calculus. In the middle column, we'll put a W. What do you want to know? Tell me what you want to know that you don't know already. This is a challenging column to fill in because students sometimes don't know what they don't know. But even if they can come up with one thing, one good question, how does this work? What would we do if this happens? That's a win in my book. Now, the last column with the L, you're going to have to hold off on for just a little bit until we finish the chapter or get towards the end of the chapter because you're going to want to revisit that and have students fill in, well, what did we learn? It's a very powerful activity where they can kind of summarize all the things that they've learned throughout chapter four. So as I said, in 4.1, we're doing some basic rules of integration. Great time to let students explore. Give them some functions and ask them if this function I gave you served as the derivative of some other function, where might it have come from? What might that other function have been? Just wait and see the kind of responses you get. And many times, students will actually be teaching themselves this technique of integration, this concept of anti-differentiation. So then we get into section 4.2 and 4.3. 4.2 is a little abstract. It covers area, and, and the way it's presented is obviously very technical when you look at it, but don't fear. If the abstractness scares you a little bit, there's another chance for you to kind of tie in what we learn and how we do area with the Riemann sum as a definite integral in section 4.3. Now, in, in recent years, the Riemann sum as a definite integral has become a focal point on the AP exam, something that we want students to make sure they can show us they understand, and why? We want students to see that by taking the sum of an infinite amount of rectangles, limiting those widths, getting that width close to zero, summing up those rectangles, actually will allow us to find the area under any curve. This is a very powerful, powerful concept, and it leads us directly into some of the applications that we'll get into later on. So take your time here, slow the pace down a little bit, and, and make sure students really understand the technical notation that we're looking for here as we move on. The meat of chapter four, sections 4.4 and 4.5 are very exciting for me because it allows me to connect with my students on a very real level. There's a nice section project at the end of section 4.4 where we talk about the fundamental theorem of calculus. It might be a nice thing to, to gauge where they are in their understanding at the end of that section. I really love section 4.5, talking about the net change theorem. Now, it's very common for most of us to talk about particle motion when we talk about the net change theorem. And in fact, the exploration at the beginning of this section covers that. It just starts with a simple example. Cars driving on a highway, certain velocity. And we ask the students to make some type of a conclusion as to maybe how far the car has gone after a finite amount of time. So a nice intro into the idea, but what we really want is we want students to kind of broaden their horizon a little bit. You know, there's things in life beyond particle motion. And so other examples you might want to consider including perhaps we're filling up a bathtub. So we give students the rate at which water is filling a tub. And we ask them, how many gallons of water have accumulated over the first five minutes? If that's kind of not something that you think they'd relate to, try something else. This is the rate at which people enter and leave an amusement park. After a certain amount of hours, how many people remain in the park? Things of this nature allow students to connect with experiences that they've likely encountered. And in these situations, it allows for a more concrete understanding of the material. So finally, in the last three sections of chapter four, we'll cover some more basic rules of integration. Techniques, if you will. Integration by substitution, integration of natural log functions, integration of inverse trigonometric functions. Very important skills to build as we continue to move forward and help students on a greater understanding of calculus. I hope these tips have been helpful and that you find much success in chapter four.